Hey, today we are going to analyze the guitar solo from Paranoid, Black Sabbath's great, great classic song with a very um, pentatonic solo by Tommy Iommi. I like to teach this solo because it's really, in a way, it's actually quite simple. I mean, it sounds great, but there's there are no notes outside of the minor pentatonic scale. And so it's a really good learning experience for students to get used to the pentatonic shapes and to try to visualize those pentatonic shapes while they're learning the solo. And that's the thing that I think we should always do. It's something that I think that um, many people don't do enough of. They kind of memorize how a solo goes by thinking, oh, it goes nine, seven, nine, seven, whatever. But we wanna think about how the notes fit into the pentatonic shapes so that we can learn more from it, so that we can write our own solos using the same and similar ideas, or that so when we're improvising, we can use those types of ideas in our own improvisations. So if you're not familiar with your pentatonic shapes, then we're gonna cover uh, two of them that you need here for this solo. And um, the solo has some pretty fast parts, so it is a little challenging at times, but even if you can't play it at speed, you know what, maybe it doesn't matter. You're still learning a lot from doing the solo. Now this is a two part series because I'm also going to put a video up with a, what I call a guided jam track. So what that means is that there's a backing track and it gradually gets faster and faster so that you can slowly uh, get the solo up to speed by playing along to the backing track, right? So check that out, the link will be in the description. So the first thing that we want to know about this solo is that it starts in this E minor pentatonic shape, right? So I'm on 7th fret, 1st finger. On the A string, that 7th fret is my E root note, right? I want to know that E root note there. And my shape from there is going to be 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 9, 8, 10, 7, 10, right? 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 9, 8, 10, 7, 10. It's hard to say those numbers and play that at the same time. <laughs> um, so that's not the first pentatonic shape that we all tend to learn. We tend to learn what I call the easy shape, right? But this pentatonic shape is used for so many guitar solos, so let's get good at that. Here's how the solo starts. We're going to bend that 9 of the G string. Well, that's another root. We're going to bend it up, bring it down, do a pull off to 7, and then hit the 9 again. So that's a lot of movement, right? Up, down, pull off, and then back to 9. Okay, so we got that, and then we're going to go 9, 7, plucked, and then 9, 7, pull off. Right? So we got... Now we're going to go down to the D string, and we're going to slide 9 to 7. So that's... Now that puts us into the lower pentato pentatonic shape, below that, right? But we're only playing a few notes of it anyway, so it's just 5-7-5-7. Five, seven, five, seven. And then 5-7 on the A string. Okay. The, the hammer-ons in this and the rhythms in this solo to me seem almost kind of too simple. But you know, it was a long time ago. Everything is really on the beat. It's very kind of, uh, I don't know, square in a way, right? So that first line so far is... Give me some vibrato. Right, we can see that those last bits there. The cool part of that is it actually matches the rhythm of the track underneath, of the guitar and the drums underneath, right? So I really like how then the the solo and the band underneath kind of come together there. So let's try that whole first line again. Awesome. Okay, now second line. We're gonna move back up into that E minor pentatonic shape that was here, right? 
we're going to do that. We're still at the 5th fret and we're going to hammer 5-7 on the D string and then we're going to slide up 2 frets and now we're back into that pentatonic shape, right? So that's and then on the G string we're going to go 7-9 oops so that's again, everything is so square and on the beat, right? All these hammer-ons and, and, and uh, picked notes. Cool. Now, what is a little neat here is that he actually backs off a bit so that he can slide 7 to 9 on the G string. Right? Now we're in this pentatonic shape and remember, in this pentatonic shape, the B string goes 8-10. Right? It's very different than the, the standard pentatonic shape that we all first learned. So this part now is... And we back up. Right, now we're on that 10 on the B string and that's where we're gonna bend up. And then we go eight and bend 10 again. Right, so that's uh, from this bar here. Back up. So that big thing is he likes these bends and pull-offs, right? I mean, it's hard to tell exactly which ones are pull-offs and not when you listen to the track. It's pretty fast and it's not the greatest of mixes or recording, but if you play some of them as pull-offs and if you pick some of them, I don't think anybody's going to complain. So let's back up to bar. What is that? Bar five. And then we go da, da, da. again, kind of like a very square rhythm. Cool. Okay, now, as always, I'll mention my books, which are available on Amazon. This one's called Guitar Soloing Like a Pro, and it has all kinds of great ideas to improve your ability to play solos and to understand how solos are written and constructed. And then Guitar Strumming Like a Pro, which has all kinds of ideas for you to improve how to strum the guitar, but how to make it more interesting, you know, rather than just going strumming blah 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 strum pattern, but how to add some tricks and licks into your playing at a moment's notice. In the next bar, he's going to start in this shape we're already in, and then he's going to slide way up to the 12th fret, well, 14 and 12. And think about where he's going before we do this here. 12th fret. 12th fret of my low E, of course, that's E, right? That's the octave. And so sliding up into this position puts us into our standard, or what is our standard pentatonic shape, or what I usually call our easy shape, right? Our easy shape is like this. 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15, right? If you've been playing guitar solos for a little while, you probably know that shape already. Okay, so let's back up to the beginning of this bar. We're on the G string, and we're going to hammer seven to nine. And then it's kind of cool because he hits nine twice more. So it's neat, he goes like this. So the first one is the down pick, and the second note is the hammer. So we, of course, we don't pick that. The third and fourth notes should be down up then. So your pick direction will be down, down, up. Now, as soon as we hit that last 9, we're going to slide that note way up to 14. 14 on that G string is what puts us in that pentatonic position we just spoke of, right? So we go... That's the 14, right? And the next thing we do is the most common guitar lick probably in classic rock and blues ever. It's in so many songs, it's ridiculous, but it sounds so good. So we're on that 14. And you're going to lay that first finger down on the 12th fret, and that's where you get that 12-12 on the uh, B and E strings, right? So let's back up and do that whole bar. And then you go to that 15, as I just did, right? Cool. Next bar, we got two. We're on that 15. We're going to hit it again and bend it twice. That's a full step bend. We want to make sure that we're going to the pitch of 17. 
17 is the whole is just the next note in the pentatonic shape anyway right it's the next pentatonic shape I call it the extension shape so when you band it you want to listen for that to resolve against the chords underneath okay so now the bar previous and those two bands cool and then we get a very simple square 15 12 there Cool. Now we're going to bounce to the top high E 15, right? Again, it's just this minor pentatonic shape. Up, 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 down, right? And I think he pulls off to the 12. I don't know, some people might pick it. I think I just pull it off. Okay. Now, the next part's really fast. So we're going to back up and do everything we have so far, okay? Here on bar one. Okay. Now, the next part is like all these series of pull-offs and we can use series of pull-offs like this to sound like we are faster guitar players than we actually are right because a pull-off only requires one pick stroke for two notes and to me this is like almost the early days of this kind of sound that became the sound of so many guitar players after this right it became I don't know hard rock heavy metal hair metal all this kind of stuff here, it sounds much simpler than, of course, Eddie Van Halen ever did, but it just sounds like the beginnings of it to me, right? So, again, all in this minor pentatonic shape, there's nothing outside it. A good way to do this in terms of your fingering for this next phrase, because the next phrase is really fast, and we want to make sure that if we use the right fingers, it makes it much easier. If we use the wrong fingers, it's really hard to get it up to speed. So. Let's just do the notes and then we'll talk about which fingers they should be, right? The notes are, it's the same three notes twice in a row. We're going to go 15, 12 on the high E string and then we have 15 on the B string. And we have to do that twice, okay? So if I was just doing it twice, I might use my second finger for the B string because that frees up my third finger to do the next pull off, right? But the next phrase is a pull off 15, 12 on the B string. So we want that third finger to be there on the 15 for that. So here's the fingers you can use. Third finger for the first pull off, landing on the second finger. Third finger for the second pull off, so same, but landing on the third finger, right? So it's. So that figure is now you can give that little 14 a, a bit of a bend it's so fast honestly it's hard to tell if there's that much of a bend in there maybe there is I should give him Tommy Iommi credit he probably is I think when I do it I don't get much of a bend to be honest at speed I'm just trying to get through it so we have, let me remember how this goes. Right, we got that 12-12 lick again that's in so many songs, right? And then we have this lick again, which is third finger again, just like before, right? So we have. Now, we have to be careful of the rhythm. The rhythm is got to be right. You can't just wail away at these pull-offs, right? Like a lot of students do, just blah, blah, blah. It's got to fit, especially with this kind of style. Like I say, everything is so square on the beat. It's got to, we got to look at which one of these are 16th notes and which ones are the 8th notes. 
And what we want to be able to do is just be able to sing the rhythm in our mind so that when we're playing the lick, we can uh, hear the sound of it in our head and just replicate that rhythm, right? So I'm just reading the music and I'm going to sound like a goof and sing it. It's going to be da 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 If you can't sing it, it makes it really a lot harder. And you don't have to sing it well. It's not about singing the right notes. It's just about if you know what the rhythm is, if you truly know what the rhythm is, then you can sing the rhythm or tap it if you want. Blah, 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 whatever. Doesn't matter. Singing works for me. So let's put that whole crazy line together. What fingers did I use there? Probably the wrong ones. Probably the ones I told you not to use. No, that might have been good. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now, the last section we're going to do here. We get a nice bend of the 14. And then we get a hammer pull. Right? So that's just like a, like a hammer and then flick that finger off. So we got... D. And again, we're reading that rhythm. We can see that group of 16ths are fast. The quarter note starts with a quarter note. Again, there's a sixteenth and an eighth. So that whole phrase is. Okay, let's connect it with the next uh, note on the next bar. Mm -hmm. I can sing it. I can play it. Again, everything is square. Everything is in that basic minor pentatonic shape, the one we all learned first. Okay, now we have to shift. I have to shift my hand so that my third finger is on the 12th fret because I got to reach down to this little pentatonic shape just below. So that's Oh yeah, and actually that slide is there is is, is uh, eighth notes. So So don't slide that 12 to 14 too fast. I know a lot of students, whenever they see a slide, they always think of it as a grace note slide, that it should always just be boop. But actually, some slides should be in time. And in this case, that 12 to 14 slide is in time with, it, it, it is eighth notes. So we really want to hear the 12 for the value of an eighth note before we slide, right? So if I play, we back up to the previous bar. have the easiest part left for the solo. I think this is the easiest part. I actually find the rhythm of this ending, to me it's kind of corny. I mean, it's, it's old fashioned, I guess. And I actually find it, I just said it was the easiest part because the rhythm is so not intuitive to me. It's so simple, but it's just not, I would never, uh, this would never come out of me imp improvising, you know, like it just seems weird. I don't know. It just seems a bit corny or something. But, nah, it's not corny. Come on. Alright, so I'm going to play the whole thing slowly. So let me know if you have any questions or comments you can post below. Please like and subscribe. We've got lots more of these videos coming up here from Guitar Lessons in Vancouver. And uh, you can look us up at bluemorris.com. Thanks a lot.